Timothy C. Weingard, The Horse, A Galloping History of Humanity. If you've ever decided to get back in the saddle after a failure or organized your bits and pieces, you already know that the English language is steeped in horse-related phrases. Even in our motorized world, we still measure engine capacity by horsepower. These linguistic remnants hint at a deeper truth. Horses have been a transformative technology in human societies for millennia. They carried conquerors across continents, plowed fields that fed growing populations, and knit cities together with their strength and speed. So saddle up for a journey through time, where horses aren't just animals, but catalysts of human culture. The Dawn of the Horse the story of the horse begins not in the vast steppes of Asia or the plains of Africa, but in the forests of North America. Surprisingly, this is where horses first evolved, starting as small, dog-sized creatures some 55 million years ago. These early species, known as Eohippus, or dawn horse, had multiple toes and browsed on leaves in dense woodlands. As the climate changed and grasslands expanded, however, horses adapted. They grew larger, developed single-toed hooves for speed on open ground, and teeth suited for grazing tough grasses. This gradual transformation took place over millions of years, with various horse species spreading across North America. Between two and three million years ago, horses crossed the Bering Land Bridge into Asia, and from there they spread into Europe and Africa. Ironically, while horses thrived in these new lands, they mysteriously vanished from their North American homeland around 10,000 years ago, possibly due to climate change and human hunting. Fast forward to the 19th century, when the hunt for fossils became a scientific obsession. This era saw the infamous Bone Wars, a fierce rivalry between paleontologists Othniel Charles Marsh and Edward Drinker Cope. Their competition, while frequently unethical, led to the discovery of many fossils, including numerous horse ancestors. Marsh, in particular, made significant contributions to understanding horse evolution. He unearthed a series of horse fossils that seemed to show a clear progression from small, multi-toed forest dwellers to large, single-toed grassland runners. His major finds were from ancient deposits of the White River Badlands in Nebraska and South Dakota, as well as fossil deposits in the Wind River Basin of Wyoming. When Marsh presented his findings to Darwin, the famous naturalist was elated. Here was tangible evidence of gradual change over time, exactly as his theory predicted. The horse family tree became a textbook example of evolution, showing how a species could adapt to changing environments over millions of years. However, as with many scientific discoveries, the reality proved more complex than initially thought. Later research revealed that horse evolution wasn't a simple linear progression, but a complex branching tree with many dead ends and parallel developments. Despite this complexity, the horse's evolutionary journey remains a compelling story of adaptation and survival. From the forests of ancient North America to the grasslands of Eurasia, horses have shaped ecosystems and human societies alike. Their return to the Americas with European colonizers would mark yet another chapter in their remarkable history, setting the stage for profound changes in the New World. The Dark Rider Horses and War The moment when humans first climbed atop a horse is lost to history, but it is estimated to have happened about five millennia ago. This daring act, perhaps by some reckless teenager showing off by jumping on a horse's back and trying to hang on as it galloped off, changed the course of civilization. By the time the Book of Revelation was written two millennia ago, the image of the four horsemen was instantly recognizable, showing how deeply horses had galloped into our collective imagination. In warfare, horses proved revolutionary. The Romans, with their advanced horsemanship and chariot technology, conquered vast swaths of Europe and North Africa. But it was in the east where horse-based warfare reached its zenith. Alexander the Great, the Macedonian conqueror, rode his famous steed Bucephalus into legend. 
This coal-black horse, supposedly tamed by the young Alexander when no one else could, carried him through most of his campaigns. Together they forged an empire stretching from Greece to India. Alexander's cavalry charges were often a decisive factor in his battles, with horses providing the speed and power to overwhelm enemy formations. Centuries later, an even more formidable horseman emerged from the steppes of Central Asia. Genghis Khan and his Mongol warriors were practically born in the saddle. Their entire way of life revolved around horses. They drank mare's milk, wore horsehide armor, and used every part of the animal in their daily lives. The Mongol cavalry was a terrifying force. Each warrior managed multiple horses, switching mounts to keep them fresh. This allowed the Mongols to cover vast distances at speeds that seemed supernatural to their enemies. They could shoot arrows accurately while at full gallop, a skill honed through lifelong practice. Under Genghis Khan and his successors, the Mongols created the largest contiguous land empire in history. Their conquests, while brutal, had an unexpected side effect. They secured and united the Silk Road. This ancient network of trade routes, stretching from China to the Mediterranean, flourished under Mongol protection. The Pax Mongolica, as historians call this period, saw an unprecedented exchange of goods, ideas, and cultures across Eurasia. Horses served as the primary mode of transport for traders and diplomats alike. From the thundering hooves of Alexander's cavalry to the lightning raids of Mongol horsemen, horses shaped the fate of empires. They carried conquerors to glory and opened trade routes that connected distant civilizations. In doing so, these majestic animals didn't just change the face of warfare, they rewrote the map of the known world. Coming full circle, the horse in North America. The story of horses in the Americas is one of departure and dramatic return. As we learned in the first section, horses evolved in North America but then vanished around 10,000 years ago. Through their migrations, the horse family diversified globally. In Africa, zebras developed their distinctive stripes, while in Central and South America, the stocky tapir emerged as a distant horse cousin. And in North America, the reintroduction of horses would reshape the continent. When Spanish conquistadors arrived in the Americas in the 16th century, they brought countless horses with them. Some of these animals escaped or were deliberately released, and soon formed feral herds that spread across the Great Plains. For Native American tribes, the reappearance of horses was nothing short of revolutionary. The Comanche were among the first to fully embrace equestrianism, becoming renowned as the Lords of the Plains. They developed sophisticated breeding programs and pioneered new riding techniques, such as hanging from the side of a galloping horse to use it as a shield in battle. The horse transformed Native American life in countless ways. It amplified hunting capabilities, with mounted hunters able to take down buffalo with unprecedented efficiency. Horses also expanded trade networks, allowing tribes to cover vast distances and exchange goods more readily. Horses also profoundly impacted Native American spirituality and culture. Many tribes incorporated horses into their creation myths and religious ceremonies. The Lakota, for instance, performed intricate horse dances to honor the spirit of their equine partners. Horses also reshaped Native American warfare. Mounted warriors could strike quickly and retreat just as fast, revolutionizing intertribal conflicts and resistance against European encroachment. The feared Comanche-like cavalry, for example, managed to halt Spanish expansion northward for nearly two centuries. However, the integration of horses into Native American life wasn't without challenges. It led to increased competition for resources, shifted social structures, and in some cases, exacerbated intertribal conflicts. The horse's return to North America was full circle. The descendants of animals that had evolved on the continent millennia ago were now reshaping its human cultures. This equine renaissance demonstrates the profound impact that a single species can have on human societies, transforming everything from daily life to warfare and spirituality. Plowshares and Profits How Horses Powered the Agricultural and Industrial Revolutions 
While horses played a crucial role in warfare and conquest, their impact on agriculture and industry was equally revolutionary. From medieval fields to Victorian factories, horses, along with their cousins donkeys and mules, quite literally powered human progress. The medieval agricultural revolution owes much to the humble horse. Around the 8th century, a seemingly simple invention, the horse collar, changed everything. Unlike earlier harnesses that choked horses as they pulled, the collar allowed horses to use their full strength without discomfort. This, combined with the heavy plow, transformed European agriculture. Horses could plow fields faster and deeper than oxen, allowing farmers to cultivate heavier, more fertile soils. They could also work longer hours. The result? Crop yields soared, supporting larger populations and spurring urban growth. As Weingard points out, this equine-powered agricultural boom laid the foundation for Europe's later global dominance. Horses were also crucial to the growth of early industries. Horse-drawn wagons and canal boats moved goods across countries, while horse-powered mills ground grain, sawed wood, and pumped water from mines. The Industrial Revolution, often associated with steam engines, actually began with horsepower. In textile mills, horses turned massive wheels that powered looms and spinning jennies. In mines, horses operated pumps and hauled coal to the surface. On city streets, horse-drawn omnibuses provided the first form of public transportation. During this period, the demand for working horses skyrocketed. By the late 19th century, London alone had over 300,000 working horses. In rural America, the number of horses grew from about 4 million in 1850 to 21 million by 1900. Mules, the sturdy offspring of horses and donkeys, played a particularly important role. Prized for their strength, endurance, and sure-footedness, mules were essential in construction, mining, and agriculture. The construction of the Erie Canal, a feat that opened up America's interior to trade, relied heavily on mule power. The horse's role in industry extended to unexpected areas as well. The standardization of parts and manufacturing, a key development in the Industrial Age, was first achieved in the production of interchangeable parts for horse-drawn vehicles. Even as steam and later electricity began to replace horsepower, horses remained crucial. They delivered coal to power stations and transported goods from factories to railheads. It's easy to forget, but the transition to machine power was very gradual. Even as late as 1900, 90% of the power used in American agriculture still came from horses and mules. City Steeds – How Horses Shaped Urban Life in the late 19th century, major cities like London and New York were still powered by horses. These urban centers were home to hundreds of thousands of working horses, each producing around 15 to 35 pounds of manure daily. The logistics of managing this equine population were staggering. Streets needed constant cleaning to prevent disease and maintain passability. In New York, an army of street cleaners, known as White Wings for their uniforms, worked tirelessly to keep roads clear. Despite their efforts, during rain or snow, streets often became impassable quagmires of horse manure and mud. Maintaining this vast equine workforce required extensive infrastructure. Stables dotted the urban landscape, often occupying prime real estate. Farriers and blacksmiths were essential tradesmen, while grooms and stable hands formed a significant portion of the urban workforce. Feed stores, hay markets, and carriage makers were common sights. The Great Horse Manure Crisis of 1894 epitomized the challenges of horse-dependent cities. Urban planners predicted that within 50 years, horse manure would bury London streets nine feet deep. This crisis spurred the search for alternatives, ultimately leading to the rise of the automobile. The transition from horses to cars was gradual but transformative. Early automobiles shared the roads with horses, often causing chaos as their noise and speed spooked equine traffic. But by the 1920s, cars had largely replaced horses in most urban centers. This shift dramatically reshaped cities. 
Stables were converted into garages or demolished for new construction. The need for constant street cleaning diminished, improving urban sanitation. Cities could expand more easily without the constraints of horse-based transportation. However, the automobile age had its own challenges. Traffic congestion, air pollution, and urban sprawl became new issues for city planners to tackle. The intimate connection between city dwellers and animals was largely lost, changing the character of urban life. After the engine. For horses, the transition from economic backbone to obsolescence was often brutal. As their value plummeted, many faced neglect or slaughter. Between 1900 and 1960, the U.S. horse population plunged from 21 million to just 3 million. Survivors often endured harsh industrial conditions or were shipped overseas for meat. However, this decline sparked a new chapter in the human-horse relationship. As horses lost their economic role, they gained significance in unexpected ways. Therapeutic riding programs emerged, using horses to assist people with physical and mental health challenges. The unique bond between horse and human became a powerful tool for healing and personal growth. In the realm of spirituality, horses found a renewed place. Some Native American tribes revived horse culture to reconnect with their heritage. New Age philosophies embraced horses as spiritual teachers, valuing their intuitive nature and calming presence. Recreational riding saw a remarkable resurgence. Horseback riding evolved from a necessity to a popular leisure activity. Equestrian sports like show jumping, dressage, and eventing gained international followings. Even in urban areas, trail riding in parks offered city dwellers a chance to reconnect with nature. Conservation efforts for wild horses also gained traction. In the United States, the Wild Free Roaming Horses and Burrows Act of 1971 provided protection for these animals on public lands. While management of wild horse populations remains controversial, it has raised awareness about the importance of preserving these living symbols of the American West. Today, horses continue to connect us to history and to nature, and their story is far from over. In this new chapter of horse history, humans are learning to appreciate them not just for what they can do, but for who they are, intelligent, sensitive beings with whom we share a unique and enduring bond.